It's time to win you some money. Welcome on into another edition of Beat the Bookie. I'm your host, Johnny Gadamowitz, and I really can't express to you just how excited I am to be back for another BTB appearance. Last time you saw my face on this show, we were talking college lacrosse. And hey, I don't mean to knock the great sport of LACKS lax. But come on, give me a football card over a lacrosse card eight days a week. Now, before we dive right in and let you know which picks this week will put you in the green, let's first check out how our fearless leader, Citrus TV Sports Director, Ryan Nelson, made out one week ago. And sorry, Nelly, but it wasn't all too great. This is someone who came on this show weeks past and set records. Same can't be said last week for Nelly, as he unfortunately could not live up to that standard. We'll see where that puts him as far as the semester standings are concerned middle of the pack he wasn't in the green but hey as long as you're not in Cameron Isaire territory you've got a good thing going although today the hope is to try and rival what John Dales was able to do and we'll, with that let's kick things off with our big games of the week. It's a top 10 showdown in Ann Arbor. Number 10 Penn State pays a visit to number 5 Michigan. Each squad is coming off results that were probably a bit closer than expected. Michigan and Bloomington against Indiana and Penn State two weeks ago against Northwestern. Still, both teams roll into this showdown with undefeated records intact. This game figures to be the unstoppable force. Michigan's rushing attack against the immovable object, Penn State's run defense. Michigan running back Blake Corum second nationally with 11 rushing touchdowns on the year and the third among all backs with 735 yards total. Penn State's defense on the other hand number five nationally by surrendering all of just 79 yards per game on the ground. And as much as I do like J.J. McCarthy and company, I don't see the Wolverines winning this game by more than a touchdown. Plus, Michigan is just 5-12 and 12 against the spread against AP top 10 teams under Jim Harbaugh. Let's go ahead and throw $10 on Penn State plus 7. Next up on our docket of big games, we'll head over to Knoxville for maybe the biggest of games that Week 7 has to offer. It's number 3 Alabama visiting number 6 Tennessee, and all eyes will be on last year's Heisman winning quarterback Bryce Young. The realistic hope is that he'll be in action for the Crimson Tide, but even if he's not, Nick Saban's crew still a force to be reckoned with. Sure, the resume isn't as spotless as you might like. A one-point decision at Texas, four-point victory over a and that came down to the game's last play. Even still, though, Jameer Gibbs leads the nation in yards per carry, the tied third overall in rushing yards per game, and just came off a 288-yard showing on the ground against a good a and front seven. The combo of Gibbs and even a less than 100% young is going to prove to be too much. Nick Saban, 15-0 against UT as Bama's head coach. He becomes 16-0 this weekend as Bama covers the spread of minus 8.5. Let's toss 15 shekels on the Crimson Tide. For our final big game, we'll move to Fort Worth, where oh so much is up for grabs in the Big 12 between number 13 TCU and number 8 Oklahoma State. The Horned Frogs offense continues to impress, coming off of a win over Kansas last weekend, so much so to a point where Vegas actually has them favored over the Cowboys. Sure, maybe Oklahoma State hasn't been challenged too much this year, but you know the saying, slow and steady wins the race. And the Cowboys have been, well, just that, steady. In fact, OKSU 13-3 against the spread dating back to last season. Consistency is key, and although there might not be anything too sexy about the 2022 Cowboys, let's put some respect on their name. They're still a top 10 team. I don't see a world where TCU wins by more than a field goal. This is a bet that, quite frankly, Vegas is daring me to take, and I'm all in. Let's go $15 on the Cowboys at plus three and a half. With that, let's compare my picks to our producer's picks. Not a whole ton of disagreement on our end today. Really, the only thing where we do differ is in the Big Ten, that Penn State and Michigan game. We'll, of course, see how that shapes out this weekend. Moving right along, let's shift gears to yet another ranked matchup. One of six this weekend to be exact. We'll move over to Salt Lake City for number seven USC and number 20 Utah. And well, Utes fans are pressing the panic button. Already two losses this season, including last week to UCLA. USC, on the other hand, perfect through six games, and they've elevated themselves into some CFB conversations. I 
I think those conversations come to an abrupt end this week, though. Look, Utah needs to win in the worst way. The formula to beating Lincoln Riley and company is simple. Limit Caleb Williams, and Utah can do just that. The Utes back seven group will play these Trojan targets a little more physically than opponents have been up until now. It's been a big play offense for USC all year long. This week, I don't think that big play will be there. Utah minus three and a half. Book it. Ten dollars on that. We'll shift gears to the Big Ten now, and more specifically the Big Ten West, where number 24 Illinois hosts Minnesota. Minnesota is favored by six and a half points, but to be honest, I don't feel too confident enough in either squad to take a firm stance on the spread. What I do know is this, though: 39 and a half is a very low over/under, but it is that low for good reason. It's an Illinois game. The Illini have allowed is 16 points over the last three games, and that doesn't even include a 24 to three takedown over Virginia a few weeks before that. On the flip side, Minnesota allowing just over 11 points per game over its last three. Life's too short to bet the under, except for when it isn't, and well, this is one of those cases. Bet the under will throw $15 on that. From Champaign to Athens we go, where number one Georgia gets Vanderbilt. These two programs are on about as polar opposite sides of the spectrum as you can get. The best team in all the land? And Vanderbilt, and well, the line is pretty reflective of that. Georgia minus 38 and a half, but what can't the Bulldogs do? From a Vandy standpoint, in their three losses this year, they've given up more than 50 points per game. I have no doubt Georgia hits that 50-point plateau here, and when these two squads met a year ago, Vanderbilt didn't score a singular point. That won't happen again, but I'd be hard-pressed to see them score more than 10. Let's run with Kirby Smart and company. 10 bucks on Georgia to cover. Keeping it in the SEC, bad news LSU fans, it's Tom Petty Day at the Swamp in Gainesville. The Gators wrap up a three-game homestand searching for their third straight victory. I have a lot of faith in this Florida rushing attack. LSU's front seven struggled mightily against Tennessee last week, allowing 263 yards on the ground. That's a formula for success for an even more talented UF rushing tandem. It'll be a ground and pound approach for Billy Napier's crew all day long, and that will lead them to a win and a cover over the Tigers as Brian Kelly's first year in Baton Rouge goes from bad to worse. Moving on for my dog of the week. Look, there are many things I'm a believer in. I believe everything happens for a reason. I believe in Santa Claus. I believe in putting your left sock on before your right. But what I don't believe in is Ole Miss football. Outside of barely escaping Kentucky by three points, this team has zero zilch impressive wins. And their opponent this weekend, the Auburn Tigers, is hungry for a victory. Back-to-back -back losses to Georgia and LSU. Give me the Tigers as my dog of the week on the money line at plus 490. We'll throw $5 on that. For my lock of the week, we'll move to the Atlantic Coast Conference, where number four Clemson heads to Tallahassee to face Florida State. The Tigers are still staring a perfect season straight in the face. And for good reason, Clemson has scored at least 30 points in every game so far. DJ Uyunglele has 14 touchdowns against just two INTs. He's also hitting on 64% of his throws. Combine that with a defense that is number two in college football, allowing just under 64 rushing yards per game. Dope Campbell might be a tough atmosphere, but Clemson wins by more than three points easily. $10 on the Tigers. We've got five left to spend, so let's sprinkle it on a three-leg parlay. We'll start with Mississippi State and Kentucky, where for whatever reason, Vegas doesn't think there were going to be many points. If there's one thing I know about Mississippi State, it's that they can put up points in bunches, at least 40 points in each of the last three games. Last week against Arkansas, 568 yards of total offense. That number won't be as high against Kentucky, but there will be at least 49 points scored in this football game. Next up, we'll create a little bit of a hedge for ourselves. We spoke earlier about LSU and Florida and the strength of that Gators run game. But if history has shown us anything, it's that LSU and Florida is usually pretty close in the all-time series. It's been decided by a combined 27 points in the last six games in Gainesville. The point being, this one could go either way. We'll go LSU money line here at plus 112. And finally, the third leg of the parlay, Arkansas BYU. They're going to put up some points this weekend. Arkansas coming off three straight losses. BYU fresh off the heels of just a 20-point performance against Notre Dame. These two offenses way better than the past few weeks have suggested. And hey, I'm a law of averages.
this guy. The law of averages tells me to hit the over in Utah this weekend. So with that, let's recap our card. I like Penn State, Alabama, and Oklahoma State in our big games to each cover. Utah surprises some people and covers the minus 3.5 over USC. Defense prevails in Minnesota and Illinois. I've got the under there. Georgia steamrolls Vandy, while Florida wins by a field goal or more against LSU. Auburn hands Ole Miss its first loss of the year, and there is no chance Clemson and Florida State is a close game. Dabo Sweeney's squad makes things happen big time in Tallahassee, and then of course we close things out on our $5 parlay. Mississippi State, Kentucky over, LSU money line, and Arkansas BYU over. Well, that'll do it for this edition of Beat the Bookie. Thanks so much for joining us. I've been your host, Johnny Gadamowitz, saying so long, and go get him this week.